Edith and Balcom, the award-winning author of The Wolf Pack, the inspiration behind the Jeff Davis TV series Wolf Pack, starring none other than the phenomenal Sarah Michelle Geller is our guest today. Ada has written 35 books and over 300 short stories. You're watching the Writer's Corner live show. Don't go away. We will be right back. <laughs> If you have just joined us then welcome to the writer's corner live show if you're not following us on social media yet please do so and then you'll get a notification when we go live next time in today's show we're going to be talking to Ada van Balcom um, the amazing author of the um, series we're going to be watching today the wolf the wolf the wolf pack uh, if this is the first time you're watching the show feel free to let us know we'll be happy to give you a shout out the Writer's Corner live show is made possible and brought to you by Creative Edge, StreamYard and Be Live Media. So a special warm welcome. Whether you're watching us over on Amazon, on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube, LinkedIn, um, it really doesn't matter. We love our audience wherever you are. But before we introduce our amazing guest, Ada van Balcom, First, let me say hello to my friend and co-host, Mary Elizabeth Jackson. She's a special needs and disabilities advocate, an educational speaker, podcaster, ghostwriter, and also an award-winning author. And her latest release, You May Like, Don't Check Out, is Cheers from Heaven um, with Thought and Klein. Mary, how are you today? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm good. I can't complain. And I'm very excited about our special guest in our studio today. Yes, absolutely. And it's very exciting, the things that we're going to be talking about and sharing with our audience. We're really looking forward to it, as well as all of the folks who are watching us today. We're so glad you're joining us from everywhere and around the globe. Absolutely. So for those of you who have not yet met Edo, he's an incredible author. Um, he is a Canadian author who's written 35 books and over 300 short stories. Um, and it includes horror, science fiction, fantasy and mystery. His stories, Rat Food, with David Nickel, won the Horror Writers Association's Bram Stoker Award. It's a big deal. Also, I know, I know. Also, Hockey's Night in Canada won the Canadian top prize for speculative fiction, the Aurora, another big wow. Yes. Um, and then, of course, our conversation today mainly is around his young adult series, Wolfpack, which is the inspiration behind the Jeff Davis TV series, Wolfpack, starring none other than the amazing Sarah Michelle Geller, which has been released worldwide. So I think let's just put our hands together and give him the warmest welcome ever um, onto our show. Hello. First Do you feel special? Shows. That's great. Good to be yeah. here. <laughs> so nice to have you here. Hope you feel special. Oh, Absolutely. Cool. That, was, that was terrific. <laughs> Ada, thank you so, so much for joining us on the show today. We are pretty, pretty stoked to have you on the Writer's Corner live show to talk about uh, Wolfpack. But before we jump into Wolfpack, Rat Food won the Horror Writers Association's Bram Stoker Award and Hockey's Night 
uh, in Canada won the Canadian top prize for speculative speculative fiction, The Aurora. Tell us about that first. I really would like to know a bit more about that. Uh, well, my, my number one passion when I was writing was always writing short stories. Uh, the impetus to become a writer was I wanted to be like Ray Bradbury. I read his collection, The October Country, and every story in there was just fantastic. 20 short stories. And that's the kind of writer I wanted to be who could write short stories that would give someone else the, the good vibes that I had after finishing reading one of his stories. So I set out to do that. And in the late 90s, I did uh, my first short story collection, Death Drives a Semi, 20 short stories, and it achieved that goal of mine. But to your question, uh, Rat Food, I wrote with a fellow writer here in Toronto, uh, David Nickel. We were both working at the uh, North York Mirror newspaper. I was uh, doing police reporting, and he was, uh, I think, general news. And uh, we belonged to the same writers group, and we were always talking about stories we were doing. And I had this story about a woman who fed the rats in her home so they wouldn't come around when visitors came or someone, you know, in authority. And then I thought, well, what if she happens to have a stroke and can't feed the rats anymore and, uh, <laughs> i had an ending and he said no no you know it would be better if this happened and i go wow that's brilliant so we did it his way and together we had enough to win the award it's uh, truly a good story and it's shocking and you don't see it coming except i've told you most of it now but uh and then the hockey's night in canada um i wrote about um NHL players finishing their careers off in the Soviet Union. I call it the Russian Hockey League, but it ended up when it was created, it was called the Continental Hockey League and uh, won the Aurora Award. I also, since you're mentioning this, I run, I won a uh, Truck Riders of North America Tuna Award for fiction, but I'll, I'll leave that. Wow. To you. I did That's awesome. I did a a series that ran 15 years called Mark Dalton, Owner Operator, about a trucking detective. And um, I did about 55 stories for that. And the one that won, he uh, delivered a baby on the side of the road. Yeah. A lot of fun. Wow. That is awesome. That, that is that, awesome. Yeah. I wish I could have made my living writing short stories because it was so much more fun. But you have to. You have to do more than that, write novels and do other things. Uh, and I did, to make a living as a writer, I did all kinds of other jobs. I taught night school. I edited books. I wrote trivia questions, uh, you know, book reviews, anything that anyone would have me do for them. So it was a tough uh, way to make a living. Yeah, but you did it. And congratulations. And how exciting for all of your accomplishments. Um, and you're still going, you're, you're still rising. So, um, you know, we want to congratulate you, congratulate you on Wolfpack. Um, it's, that's very exciting. When someone buys the rights to your book and options it for film, you know, what does that in, exactly entail for you as the author for anybody out there listening that's curious about this? Okay. So the process is, um, someone decides that they want to develop your property and they approach you uh, with an offer for an option. And the option usually has a time period of 18 months or two years. You can negotiate more time, but usually it's that time length. And what that does is that gives the person purchasing the option the ability to work and develop that property without anyone else doing the same thing with the property. So you have exclusive rights to that property for that time period. And if that time period lapses and nothing's been done, then either you, you get the, the property back or they can renew the option for another 18 months to two years to try and get it going again. Um, once they do set up filming, there's a second payment. The first payment is just for the option period the first day of filming, then the full payment has to be made. And that's usually the substantial sum that everyone hopes for. First day of filming, that's when that has to be paid. And in my case, 
the first day of filming came very quickly, well within 18 months. So it's very, uh, very odd and rare that it happens that quickly. Congratulations. Wow. That, 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 you know, that's good to know because there are people out there who want to know exactly how it works. So not everyone whose book is optioned actually gets the call like you did um, and say, you know, we're actually going to go ahead and, and film. So what has that experience been like for you? Um, because Paramount Plus is a pretty big deal, you know, and having someone like Sarah Michelle Gellis starring in the film is a big deal too. So, you know, what has it felt like for you as an author? Well, there's a couple of questions there. I'll try to answer them as best I can. I've had two uh, properties optioned previously, uh, two novels, Scream Queen and Blood Road, 18 month options. The option period passed. They uh, reverted back to me and nothing more to be said about it. When Wolfpack was first published in 2004, there were two people that were interested in optioning or interested at, a, at all. One was a associate producer on the Survivor television series. The other one said at the time they had a development deal with Paramount Pictures. Great. You know, both people in the industry having some juice. You think this is fantastic. Then nothing. Never heard from them again. Not a peep, not a, a letter, email, nothing. And when this came around, and I was, I remember distinctly, I was sitting in the kitchen at home. My wife was making dinner. I was sitting there, we we're talking, and I got an email, oh, from my agent. Somebody's interested in the television movie rights to Wolfpack. You know, just gave a shrug and say, oh, that's great. You know, don't they know it's been out of print for 16 years? Like, sure, we'll entertain this. Because I had no expectation that anything was going to happen. And uh, so we did sign the option, and... Uh, Six months later, there was a press release saying it was in development. And still, you know, okay, things are in development. That's fine. Um, that doesn't mean anything at this point. And then three weeks after that, Paramount came out with a teaser trailer saying that the series was going to be produced by Jeff Davis and was going to be out late 2022. And I was gobsmacked. I couldn't believe it. I kept watching that teaser trailer for three hours saying, oh, it's going to happen. My name is still there. He said, based on the acclaimed series by Edo Van Belkin. And I thought, wow, this might happen. And then in June, this another few months later, they started filming. And like, oh, my God, this is going to happen. It's a real thing. And then the teaser trailer came out, 30 seconds. And I watched it. And I'm like, oh, my God, it looks like a real television show. This is, this is for real. Like, it is going to happen. And I... I'm still kind of numb to it. Like, it, did it really happen? I mean, the first season's aired eight episodes and everyone's clamoring for season two. And I'm still like, did that just happen? I think so. And here I am talking about it. And yeah, I guess it did happen. And I'm just waiting for season two because I'm enjoying every moment of this because it, it is lucky, but not entirely, you know, just down to dumb luck. But it, I'm fortunate, put it that way, that this has happened to me. Yeah, and you know, congratulations again. I, I don't have. We can. We're going to say it all through this interview. Thank I know you. it's just so exciting. Well, because I, I know. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. What? No, I. You keep saying congratulations, and I said, well, the only thing I did on this was write a good book, and all the but other that, things came from that. One congratulations per book is more than satisfactory. <laughs> well, what would, I know there are people out there who want to know, you know, in the adaptation of the feel, film of your books, how much creativity input did you have with this? Good question. On a scale of one to 10, one being a little and 10 being a lot, zero, zero, none. Interesting. Uh, they purchased the rights to it and they worked on it. And I was not consulted, and that's fine. I mean, Jeff Davis, he knows what he's doing, experienced uh, producer and writer in Hollywood, doing TV uh, shows, Criminal Minds, Teen Wolf, and now Wolfpack. He knows what he's doing. They didn't consult with me, and that's okay, because really, uh, what do I know about writing for television? I thought 
maybe I could do a, some writing for the show. But having watched it, the vision he has is different from what I wrote. And I tell people who read the book and, and, and want to know what happened or they're watching the, the show and saying, oh, is Sarah Michelle Geller? is she the mother? Is she there? And I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm watching like you. What I tell people is the book is the inspiration for it's not the guidebook if you're looking for what's going to happen next season by reading the books it's not going to be it is uh the inspiration for not the guidebook and i'm fine with that too i'm enjoying it and i'm watching every week say what's going to happen next and i think that's testament to jeff's ability to write and, and string things out and tease people and leave things on cliffhangers and uh, i'm thrilled that the it's been uh, handled so well. Nice. Well, that's that's amazing. So, so your series is the inspiration for the movie. So, my next question to you is: What was your inspiration for Wolfpack? Um, you know, what is the what is the premise of the story for someone who's never heard about it, um, or just you know wanting to get into the series? What did you set out to do with, with Wolfpack? Okay, a couple of questions there. I'll try to answer them one at a time. The central premise is a forest ranger who's fighting a fire. While he's fighting this forest fire, a wolf comes out of the fire with a cub in its mouth and deposits it in a safe spot near where the ranger is. He does that four times and deposits the the cubs there, goes back into the fire for a fifth time, never sees the wolf again. When the fire is over, goes back to the spot. He finds the four cubs, decides to take them, takes them with him, takes them home. And after a night at home, he checks in on them, and now those four wolf cubs have now turned into human infants. Core of the story. And that is core to the series as well. In my book, four cubs are adopted by one ranger and his wife. In the television series, two are adopted by the ranger who raises them as a single father. And as the story progresses, other werewolf teenagers are joining the pack because they've been bitten and they, they form the pack. So at the core, that's the core story. Now, the other question was how it came about in the inspiration. I've been writing for adults for many years with middling uh, amounts of success. A bunch of novels, all kinds of short stories, award winners, but the novels really never took off. So my wife, uh, children's librarian at the time, said, you should really be writing for young adults. So, okay, I took that to heart. I started by editing an anthology called Be Afraid, which was about teenagers with teenage problems, and the horror of the stories were about their teenage problems. Very well received. So I did a sequel called Be Very Afraid, obviously, that's the next uh, title, and I did the same thing. It wasn't as successful because I didn't have as many famous writers as in the first one. I had lesser-known writers giving them their chance. The, the book did all right, but clearly there was not going to be a third one, which... I wanted to call shit your pants, but the publisher never, never thought that was a good idea. So we went on to do a young adult novel. So I was going to write about teenage teenagers with all the teenage problems of bullying and puberty and relationships and family, but they were also werewolves. So they have all those teenage problems and they have this huge secret that they have to keep amongst themselves and keep from others. And that was the basis of it. And I needed to have a prologue that set up the whole story. And the one I just explained to you was it. Probably the best scene I've ever come up with and written in uh, my writing career. And I think Jeff Davis also recognized that because that whole scenario of the forest fire and the adoption is central to the television series. Um, that's really amazing. Um, and it's so cool to see, you know, you've touched on this a little bit, but, you know, what does it feel like seeing your work come to fruition like this? You know, your creation that 
in your mind, you have a passion for it. In your heart, you have a passion for it. Sometimes you're just writing it because it's coming and you just want to write something. But, you know, when you see it go bigger like this, um, and you've touched on it a little bit, like I said, what is it, how has it felt, um, so to speak? Well, a couple of things. We, when we watch the episodes each week, my wife once said to me, it must be awesome to see your name on the screen because it's on the screen for a full uh, by itself based on the novel by Ada Van Belkin. She's just saying, it must be amazing. <clears throat> and it's kind of twofold. Yeah, it's amazing. It's a little surreal. And I just wish that a little bit more of what I'd written had ended up on the screen. Now, that mm -hmm. should come with uh, the season two because, you know, I started with that scene. Jeff Davis has managed to go through eight episodes in a full season without getting to that scene in depth. So uh, it's kind of – it's great and it's kind of numbing. But I'll give you this other example. We were, my wife and I were at the uh, L.A. premiere of Wolfpack, and it was a full theater, like a regular theater. It, it's usually just for – private screenings, but it was like a full-size theater. And all kinds of actors and crew people had their friends there. And every time an actor's uh, name appeared on the screen, there's a big roar from the crowd. All their that actor's friends and family, they're just all cheering. When it came to mine, my wife and I went, yay! And we were the only two in the theater that, did, that they were saying, people are looking around, oh, maybe that's the author or something. So, yeah, it's been great. Um, it's been hard to convince people that, you know, um, that I am a part of it. Well, not really, but in that, you know, in that instance, you know, you want people to, to start cheering for you, but they don't know who you are and they don't know your involvement and you're just a name to them. So in some ways you are, but in other ways, you're like, hey, I did that. That's me. You know? <laughs> I don't know if you know that, but that's, my name is there. So that's often what I'm thinking while that's going on the screen. That's awesome. Wow, that's that's amazing. I'm sure you just kind of like want to pinch yourself, you know, from time to time. And is this is this really me? Is this really sometimes, happening? Sometimes that is. I want to. I want to just uh, pivot to something else for a minute. The we always like to ask authors this question on the show. The the covers for the wolf pack did you have any creative input in that or did you hand that over to your publisher uh usually authors don't have too much input and uh i wish i'd known you were gonna ask me i would have had a cop the original cover uh in my hand i have the the newest cover you can see there that's the new edition oh but, won't you uh, won't you just show that and again please if you don't mind Sure. There it is. Wonderful. That's the, the new edition. But uh, as far as uh, cover input goes, on the original edition, I had some input to my detriment. And not a very good cover, and it's, I blame myself. Because the author had this vision of what the werewolves should look like, and I kept telling him, no, they need a longer muzzle and more like a dog, and he changed it and then i said no no it's got to be more and he finally he gave the the prominent werewolf there a head like a, a dog like my border collie and it's so out of tune with the rest of the book and the other images that he created and to be honest it's not a great cover and i blame myself uh, just because i wrote the book doesn't mean i know everything about it and it can you know decision so the rest of the books in the series i put none of my input in and he did what he wanted and they look great and they look similar I mean, the first one stands out like what the hell is that and uh, thankfully it didn't hurt sales and it won the uh, silver birch award which is a bit really big deal bigger than uh, the aurora and i think the stoker in terms of sales and popularity with school-aged children but so i stayed out of that and i don't want to put in my input anymore we did have conferences about the agent and the artist about uh, wolf pack the new versions but i kept it i kept my input low-key 
and let other people help make the decision and it came out a lot better. So just because you wrote the book doesn't mean you know everything about it. Can't hear you. So some so sometimes you've got to leave that creative input to um, to someone else who actually knows a little bit more about that. What That's were you exactly saying, Mary? Right. That's exactly right. Jeff Davis knows what he's doing. And uh, the last thing I wanted to do was show up in Atlanta and say, no, no, that's not the way it's supposed to be. And like, no, I, he's got a vision. He's in charge. He's doing the thing. I'm grateful. Show me what you got. And he, what he has is something terrific. So I was more than happy to stand on out in the outskirts on the sidelines and just watch and be amazed by it. So. Well, it's all good advice, everything that you're talking about, because everybody has their part to play. And no, we don't know everything, but what is um, what is your next project? What what are you working on? Uh, or, or are you going to continue writing this so that they can you know, continue the series? Um, it has crossed my mind that I could write more books. And in fact, the option agreement allows me to write new books in my universe, which is kind of funny originally was i was allowed to write one every two years but uh, no i can write new books in it anytime i want the the downside of that is this one is the only uh, book in the series that is in actual physical print the other ones are available in ebook format and audio book and we'll wait to see if that new life, if there's sales enough to justify a new uh, book in the series. Um, but for now, I'm doing social media stuff. I'm doing a, a series called Wolfpack Facts, which is running on Instagram. It'll be on YouTube later. And I'm just having fun enjoying this. Uh, famous science fiction writer and editor Judith Merrill once said that uh, writing was not fun, but it was fun having written. And I find myself in that position right now. Writing is hard work. It's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And you have to have laser focus on what you're doing. I have too many distractions now to actually be focused on that one thing. My life used to be a, shaped like a bullet for my writing career. And everything I did was only for my writing career. Nothing else mattered. Everything was for that. And I'm too old for that now. So I'm enjoying having written and social media and doing these kind of things. I'm just having a blast. That's not to say that I won't write something. And uh, I do have ideas for stories and thinking ah, I should get to do that. But right now I'm, I'm happy where I am and I'm having a blast. And, you know, you two ladies are part of that right now. So hey, Dave, this was amazing. Thank you so, so much. And, uh, would love to have you back in future. We wish you well. And uh, you want, by, by the way, do you know if there's going to be a second series to the to the television? A lot of people are talking about that. The question, if it was, if there were no impediments, I'm sure it would have been announced season two already. Currently in uh, Hollywood, there is a looming Writers Guild of America strike, and what they're going to be, uh, what they're arguing over or want to negotiate is um, information about streaming shows and this is one of them to writers who you know they they don't have ratings they don't have downloads they don't have this to, to know how much money they should be getting how do you figure out residuals for streaming shows all of those things are on the table now and not only paramount plus but other studios don't want to commit to a new season and get things started when everything is going to stop with a writer's uh, potential writer strike, which will come at the end of uh, April, I believe. So hopefully they're in negotiations now. Hopefully they'll finish that, they have that resolved, and then they can get on. I do know that they have a writer's room going on, so they're discussing the story arc for the season two, but they haven't worked on individual episodes yet. So that's where it is. I'm hoping just like everyone else, season two, because I got to see what happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got our fingers crossed for you. Sure. 
Thank you very much. Oh my goodness. Ada, thank you so much for being a fantastic guest on the Writer's Corner live show. And uh, we yeah. look forward to having you back in future. Thanks everyone for watching us. And we'll see you next week back on another episode of the Writer's Corner live show. Mm -hmm.